Welcome to this lecture about the range and the quartile range that can be used to describe the spread of the data. In the previous lecture, we looked at different measures of the central tendency. In this lecture, we have a look at how the range and the quartile range can be used to describe the spread of the data. In the next lecture, we will discuss other measures of the spread, such as the standard deviation and variance. The spread of the data tells us how close or how far away the data points are from each other. For example, consider the following data where each data point represents the weight of one person. In total, there are 40 data points. For example, this data point represents a person with a weight of 110 kilos, whereas this data point represents a person with a weight of 15 kilos. We see that the data points are spread approximately between 15 and 110, which means that the lightest person has a weight of 15 kilos, whereas the heaviest person in the dataset has a weight of 110 kilos. The wide range in weights indicates that weights of children are also included in the dataset. In contrast, this dataset of weights has a smaller spread because the data spans from about 50 to 100 in this example. One measure of the spread of the data is the so-called range. The range of a dataset is defined as the difference between the largest and the smallest value. For example, the largest value of this dataset is 110, and the smallest value is 15. Therefore, the range is 110 minus 15, which is 95. This means that the distance between the smallest and the largest value in the dataset is 95. In other words, the difference between the heaviest and the lightest person in this dataset is 95 kilos. In contrast, the maximum value of this dataset is 100, and the minimum value is 50, which result in a range of 50. Therefore, we see that the range of this dataset is wider compared to this dataset. We can therefore say that this dataset has a smaller spread compared to the dataset to the left. The difference in the range in the two datasets might simply be due to that the dataset to the left includes weights of children, whereas the dataset to the right does not include children. Here is another example where we have seven data points and would like to calculate the range. To calculate the range, we must first identify the minimum and maximum values in the dataset. Then we subtract the minimum value from the maximum value. The range of the dataset is therefore equal to 7. The interquartile range is another measure of the spread of the data. The interquartile range is the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile. Quartiles are values that divide order numbers into quarters. For example, let's consider the following dataset. By plotting the data, we can easily see the order of the data points. We first need to identify the three quarters that separate the data into four parts, so that we have an equal number of data points in each part. Since we have in total eight data points, we can break up the data so that we have two data points in each of the four parts. The lower quartile is called the first quartile, whereas the upper quartile is called the third quartile. There exist many different methods to calculate the values of the upper and lower quartile. One simple method is to calculate these based on the median. We first begin to determine the value of the second quartile, which is equal to the median of the data. Since we have an even number of values, the median is here the mean of the two values in the middle, 6 and 5. Quartile 2 is therefore equal to 5.5. The value of quartile 1 is the median of the lower half of the data, which is here equal to 3.5, since it is the mean value of 3 and 4. The value of quartile 3 is the median of the upper half of the data, which is here equal to 8.5. Now, the interquartile range is the distance between the first and the third quartile. This means that we subtract quartile 1 from quartile 3, which in this case results in a value of 5. Thus, 
The interquartile range for this data set is 5. The interquartile range is defined as the range for the middle 50% of the ordered data. It is common that the interquartile range is also presented as an interval from quartile 1 to quartile 3. When we see such an interval, we can interpret it as that about 50% of the data points are located between quartile 1 and quartile 3. In this example, this would mean that 50% of the data points are located between 3.5 and 8.5. This is exactly what we see in this plot, because 4 data points are located between quartile 1 and 3, and 50% of the data points are located outside this range. Note that this is only one method out of many methods for calculating the quartiles and the interquartile range. There are several different methods to compute the quartiles. Therefore, different software tools may report different values. A so-called box plot, or box and whisker plot, is a graphical representation of the median, the quartiles and the range. If we would create the box plot of the previous example data, it would look something like this. Note that box plots may also show outliers that will be discussed in another lecture. A box plot is usually represented by a box and whiskers. The lowest point represents the minimum value of the dataset, whereas the maximum point represents the maximum value of the dataset. The distance between the two ends of a box plot therefore represents the range in this example. The lowest part of the box represents the lowest quartile, quartile 1, whereas the upper part of the box represents quartile 3, and the length of the box therefore represents the interquartile range. The box can be interpreted as the range that covers approximately 50% of the middle data points. The horizontal line inside the box represents the median, which corresponds to the second quartile. Before we end this lecture, we'll have a look at the so-called quantiles and percentiles. Quartiles are actually special cases of quantiles. Percentiles are also special cases of quantiles, which divide the data into 100 equal parts. However, although the dataset is not large enough to be divided into 100 equal parts, the percentile is commonly used to express the quantile as a percentage. The 25th percentile, or the 0 0.25 quantile, is equal to the first quartile because it corresponds to the value at which 25% of the data points are below. Similarly, we see that the 75th percentile, or the 0 0.75 quantile, is 8.5, which indicates that 75% of the observations are below this value. For example, a quantile of 0 0.875 corresponds to a value at which 87.5% of the observations are below. This was the end of this lecture about the range and the interquartile range. Thanks for watching.